really just wanted to open it up with a, with a simple question. Um, and that is, what's the single most important investment you've ever made? What's the single best investment you've made in your life? And I just want you to ponder upon that thought as I go into this presentation. So as Professor Minky mentioned, my project is titled Buying Into Our Students a Practical Approach to Investing. So what does that mean exactly? Um, in a simplified form, it just means that at, I, excuse me, at Purdue Fort Wayne, I want to create a, uh, it's an investing club, a student-based student organization that's run by the students where they invest in different um, securities and instruments of that nature. So let me go into why. Why would I want to start an investment club? And to look into that, I think we really need to look at the background and the personal saving habits of um, Americans. So according to a 2015 retirement confidence survey, um, it showed that 53% of Americans, um, excluding the value of their home, actually have less than $25,000 saved to retirement. Um, even more startling is that 35% have less than $1,000 saved. Although this isn't it's not a bad thing, but it's just not good. I mean, if people love to work, that's great, but I hope that they'll be able to enjoy their hobbies later in life down the road. So continuing with that, there was also a study done at Boston College um, that just showed that if an individual starts investing at age 25 versus 45, they'll have to save three times as less. So by the, what that really means, it just shows the main principle behind that is how compound interest and time play to your advantage. And one other statistic that, um, that came from the Bureau of labor statistics was that actually 23% of workers have access to a pension plan, um, down from 38% in 1980. So what does that mean specifically? Well, with a pension plan, um, the participants have a defined benefit, which means they get paid, it's like an annuity, they get paid a certain percentage of money each month. Um, what many companies are going to is our 401ks or 403bs for government workers. And what that means is it's still great, it's an investment and a retirement vehicle. However, what it comes down to is you have to make the investment decisions inside that vehicle. And then one final um, statistic I want to mention is just how much the S&P 500, which is a stock index, um, it's basically it's a composition of a many company stocks um, that are tracked and then see how they perform. It's actually increased 1,100 times fold in the last 70 years. Um, and I'll make a reference to that point later in this presentation. So many of you probably heard at least something similar to what I just said of that's what needs to be done, so why isn't it being done? Um, and that led me to research why don't people invest if they know this stuff? So there was a, a, a study done at Princeton where they asked the participants this simple question. Um, and there's the responses. 20% of people said they didn't know enough about the markets. Um, then you go into 10% said, we don't trust our stockbroker or financial advisor with it. It's, I don't like the aspect of that. 7% um, thought stocks were too risky. And then the final and most significant portion is said, we can't afford to. People couldn't afford to, which seems like a viable and reasonable um, example or why they couldn't do it. Well, here's the secret. And this is what I want to try to get across. And that's attacking that, that big issue is that you don't have to have a large amount of money to start investing. The most important thing is just to start. And many, many may be doubting me. Let me just show you a quick example of what I mean by that. So if you save $2.78 per day, that's all I'm asking. Um, instead of getting a Starbucks coffee, go out and get a uh, coffee from McDonald's or something simple as that, or instead of getting fast food, make your own home food um, for that day. That equates to about $1,000 in a year. Does anybody want to guess what that $1,000 turns into when you look at the uh, S&P 500 over that 70-year time frame? That $1,000 investment turns into over a million dollars. Now, this, of course, is an extreme example. Um, most people don't have 70 years to invest, but I just want to get the, the point across of how important it is to start and how much it can build and compound. So I tackled the big issue of it's not that um, people can't afford to. I know they have commitments, as I mentioned, but I'm not asking for a lot. Um, so the other thing was people didn't understand the markets. And that's where my project comes in. Um, so a little bit of background. So as I mentioned, I want to create this organization, this student-based club, and it's uh, based on investing. So what are the things that you'd be doing? Uh, you could interact with others. Uh, you'd learn more about equities, bonds, uh, derivatives, and other securities. Um, you'd also network with uh, finance professionals, and then you'd get the opportunity to analyze different companies' financial statements and learn more about them. So what would you do at one of these typical meetings? Um, there's, I just put together four possible ideas here. Um, the first thing we'd start out with, you could possibly invite a business professional to come and speak. 
um, learn more about them and their company, a uh, good way to interact and learn. Then you can discuss the overall market conditions, where you think the market's going, looking at different economic factors and things of that nature. Uh, following that, um, then you could go into a specific analysis, where you could gather information from different sites, such as Value Line, uh, Morningstar, S&P, uh, the Capital IQ, or just the Investor Relations tab on a company's website and learn more about the, um, and their financial statement equities and things of that nature. Um, and finally, then you could have a discussion with the other club members and decide on what investment you guys want to make or what is the reasoning behind it as well. So what are the benefits of this, if this is created? Uh, I listed three main ones. Uh, and the three main ones that I could think of is that first thing is that it's the connection between the local businesses and our university. Um, I'm not saying it could lead to jobs, but it's just a, a good way to interact and hopefully it could lead to more in the future. Um, the second thing, which is a big component, is it's more practical experience for students. Um, college is great. We get to learn a lot. But having that hands-on experience of actually, okay, well, if I go to a job, for, I want to go in the investment business, I can learn this. I'm going to be ahead of the competition. This is just more knowledge, and it's good for me. Um, and then finally, and the most important reason to me, which I'll touch upon later, is it's the opportunity to give back if profits are obtained. So what's the plan of action? How am I going to get this accomplished? It can sound great, but how do we get it done? Um, so the first thing was, uh, with the help of uh, Dr. Hankey, we actually contacted Purdue West Lafayette. Um, they have something similar there on campus, and we want to learn how they do it there. What was the structure of it? Um, so from that, long story short, um, there was one specific donor who donated a large amount of money to their campus there. Um, and there's a lot of restrictions on how it can be used um, because the main thing is students can't have access to the funds. And that's the biggest uh, issue that I'm facing with the project. But I'll, I'll go into more of that in a little bit here. So after that, I thought, okay, well, then I'll just go and talk with Student Life and Leadership about creating this club and how could it be done. Um, I gained a lot of information there. They were very helpful. <laughs> The biggest issue, again, was he said, yeah, we could start this up, no problem, but the real money aspect is, that's, that's, I don't know how to get around that. I said, okay, well, where else could I go? Um, and that's when we had a lunch and learn with um, um, an individual from the Office of Advancement, which was An Angie Fincannon, Ms. Fincannon. Um, and I've been in contact with her about how to do this um, and see if there's a way around it um, that we could still do this to where either someone looks over the fund, either a community member or some type of business, or either the faculty, and then the students just have the ability to invest but don't have access to the funds. Um, I also contacted uh, Professor uh, Mike Reffitt about possibly joining this with the Finance Society. So there's two possibilities. Like you can either create your own um, student organization or combine it with another, which if we can do that, I think it will lead to um, less paperwork on the side of actually having to create like a constitution for the student organization and things of that nature. So that's the hopeful route to go, but we will um, continue to see how that goes. So what's left? How do I, uh, where do I go from here now? So what I have left to do is, um, and this is the, the, big, the biggest thing, is over the summer I need to determine um, if establishing the club is a possibility. If there's a way where we can um, have students invest, um, but like again, they can't have access to the actual funds there. And like I had mentioned before, I've been talking to Ms. Van Cannon, and she has an idea, but I know she's extremely busy with work that um, I'll continue to look at it, and we'll go from there. And if things aren't possible, there's always a backup, but I, I don't want to quit on this, because I hope, and I think it can bring a lot of benefits to the university. So after that, um, I'll again meet with the Office of Advancement, um, and then I'll plan how to get funding for this. Um, so there's a, a couple different ideas we had. I, I had spoken with Susan Byers briefly about how I could do this, either writing letters to donors, um, or the dean presented, um, there's the idea of having like an event where they all gather, um, we invite the local businesses, give them our idea, and see if they want to make donations. Um, things of that nature. These are all things that I have to go into the process and look into and see if it can happen. Um, and then, yeah, as you can see, the rest of the outline of the plan and where we'll go from there. So I basically just simplified it into four simple steps um, instead of just laying it out in detail, just real quick. So we determine the structure of the club, and get the funding, we make the decision, and then we track it in our returns and see how we did. So there were two aspects to the project. It needed to be research-based and community service-based. Um, so with the research aspect, the two components here, as I mentioned before, is you're going to be um, looking in research in different companies and things of that nature. And then also to see how you're doing, you can track your um, results to a specific benchmark, such as the S&P 500 or another well-known index fund or mutual fund manager or things of that nature. Um, and the second part is it needed to be community-based. So where does that come into play? So the community component, as I mentioned, is you're going to combine with um, local businesses and build that interaction and that connection that hopefully leads to a long-lasting relationship between our college and also the businesses around the area. 
Um, the second thing is that students are going to be more prepared and experienced in this type of a field. And even for not people that aren't finance majors, it's still important to understand how to invest in retirement, the different vehicles that are offered, and things of that nature. And then finally, it's the ability to give back. And this is, this is the whole reason, um, specifically, why I wanted to use real funds, rather than just a, having it as a virtual um, experience. So what does that mean, the ability to give back? What I mean by that is the opportunity to change somebody's life. So how this is done, if profits are obtained, what I want to do is I want to take a specific percentage um, and either donate them to a specific charity or set aside a specific fund for students who are struggling um, with their expenses to pay for college. And of course, I just want to make sure I give thanks to everyone who helped me. Um, a couple of I'm sure there's more people, but I just want to um, get that across. It means a lot, and it, it really did hurt my heart that this uh, hopefully can be accomplished. And I guess I'll just leave you with this. So at the beginning of the presentation, I asked, what was the single best investment you have ever made? Um, many, maybe some of you are thinking about, I invested in this stock one time, went up 100% in one year, it was great. I made a, a bet with my friend and I won, I doubled my money. That's great, that's not what I really meant. Um, what I really meant by this is the investment in somebody else's life. Um, it, at least in my personal opinion, that's the best investment I can make. So if I can somehow create a way where I can give back to the community and give back to people who are struggling, or even as Matthias mentioned, um, being able to see the, those kids who have hard lives changing their lives, um, I mean, that's what I really want to do. That's the whole purpose of the project, is to um, change somebody else's life. Uh, and that's just a picture of a, a young guy <laughs> from uh, uh, Radisson Hospital. So, uh, and there's my reference. So if any, uh, anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to uh, take some. So the way that it sounded in your presentation, the club would just be for like students who are interested in going into the finance field. Is that correct? Or is it for anyone who's interested in learning about how to invest? No, so, you, so I want it to be for anybody. Um, there could be specific meetings maybe that are tailored to um, specifically looking at individual companies and figuring out the specific ratios and why you should invest in them. But there could be other meetings that take place where it just shows you how to, how to set up an online brokerage account um, so you know where to put that money and how to invest, and you can eliminate that learning and doing gap that a lot of people will experience. So no, I want it to be for everybody who was interested at all. Adam, I love this project. Um, my question is, is I love the idea of an investment club, um, but one thing that I've noticed going to IPFW is that we don't have any financial planning courses. And I know there's more coming, um, but it, the business school is extremely banking heavy. Um, and so for people who want to be like financial planners, um, certifi certified financial planners, like CPAs, you know, the equivalent, um, you actually have to take a course at Northwestern. That's actually the closest one um, that you can take. It's online courses, but if we could have that here in Fort Wayne, um, we, we would, you know, the whole state of Indiana, Ohio, they would come to IPFW to take this course. Um, so I think if you can't get the investment club started, I think maybe find a way to get like a CFP board approved course here. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how hard that is, um, but that might be a, a pretty cool addition to Purdue Fort Wayne and what we can offer. No, I, I completely agree. It's good to see, by the way. Um, <laughs> but no, thank you for that input too, because as I mentioned, I want to get it done, but what I don't want to happen is me just spin my wheels for a year or two and, and nothing happened. Um, so that's something I'll have to look into, though, because that sounds like a, a really good idea, and I agree 100%. Um, I've been able to interact a little bit with students from other schools through various things who are participants in an investment club. I think Taylor University has one that the students actually manage a fund. So I don't know if you have or have plans, but maybe if you could find ways to connect with those students and just find out how they do what they do. It sounds like you did some of that with Purdue, but I think that would be a, a useful platform to use is to just talk with other students. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, it's funny you mentioned Taylor. Um, so Miss Van Cannon actually used to work at Taylor, and they did something very similar to this. They set up a club, and 
So she said, yeah, we can look into that and we'll help them. So that's, that's the goal. So I'm going to try. But thank you for the input. Okay, first of all, lovely presentation. But so the ending here about investing, mm -hmm. making that important investment, the most important one, do you have any specific passion that would direct you towards a specific charity or anyone in mind that you would like to work with and donate some of the fund if it was to happen? That's a great question. Um, uh, to be honest, I haven't put a lot of thought into it. Um, I put Riley Children's Hospital on there just because I really like kids. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I just like interacting with them. I think um, being able to influence their life and change someone who doesn't know much or is little and still has a lot to learn from life, um, put them on the right path and really make a difference in the life of them, but then on the other life of the people they influence. But as far as a specific charity or organization, thing, I haven't really looked much into it, which I probably should. Thank you, though, for the question. I think uh, the clubs, uh, investment clubs that I've been familiar with, and when I was at Wright State University, we had this. The students there actually have control over of, of over a million dollars of the university's money, um, but that has been done by, uh, again, an initial kind of large donor. So one thing that you may consider, especially because you have this real passion towards teaching people about investment, saying, hey, we should start this when we're in our 20s versus w people waiting till their 40s, 50s saying, we're not going to really have that much at retirement. We're going to, like you said, maybe we enjoy working, but a lot of people are going to end up working a long time, like they can't really fo afford to retire. So one thing you could think about, and by the way, with respect to trying to you know, identify a donor, et cetera, I'm happy to help you with that as much as I can as the dean of the business school. But one thing you may consider in the, ne in the next year is because you really have the year to do it and, and also following on from the international study abroad um, type idea where it doesn't necessarily have to end next year. So maybe we work on that, but maybe you could also kind of think of a backup plan for doing maybe a simulation type of thing for not to squelch your enthusiasm, no, I know. No, I know. Um, but I know, just I know. to try to make sure that you can really get the pro you know, identify a project you can do within next academic year and then work with the rest of us to maybe start on that project down the road of, of getting an endowment because one of the things, like you mentioned, several different kind of roadblocks were, you know, students can't have access to the money. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that you can, once you have the money, then you can set up a board of kind of um, advisors from different financial firms that would then work with the students. Um, sometimes, though, you really probably have to have a lot of times, especially say it was university's money or say it was someone's donor endowment, um, then what they would say is it's a little bit more of a selected group of students who have more training in the investments, who make the decisions, et cetera. But those students could then work with other students in the club to learn about, like you said, how to start an account and what kind of analysis would have to be done, things like that. So maybe you could do kind of a two-tiered or two, kind of a two-pronged project where you are thinking about starting, you know, getting the groundwork done for the um, maybe the donation and the endowment, but at the same time, maybe you could start the student club, be doing some of those activities. Just a thought. No, thank you. Okay. No, that's, yeah, that's great to look into. Yeah, that's All right, just wondering if you thought about this. So um, okay. right now, uh, CASA is having, is having some trouble with math tutors especially, and especially lower level math where they're doing some of this financial math, like working on planning out investments and retirements, and there are very few people, um, at least working for CASA, who have experience doing that kind of math. So I don't know if you thought about it, but something that your, um, your organization could do is maybe establish some tutoring help for those people too. Because I know it's things that people struggle with, compound interest, but there's, there aren't a lot of people that, that are, at least in CASA, that are qualified to help with that. So if you've thought about that, that might be something you could do. Oh, thank you. I was not familiar with that. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with CASA, but I didn't know there wasn't any for people for that. So thanks, Dylan. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, so I was just kind of curious. There's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of talk recently about ICOs, and some people are thinking of them as something you invest in, almost like a new version of stocks or something like that. Have you thought about incorporating ICOs uh, like cryptocurrencies and things into uh, your setup as well? 
<laughs> to be honest with you, that'd be up to the other members. Me personally, I don't know enough about cryptocurrency, so I won't touch it. Um, that doesn't mean it's a good investment, but I don't understand it, so I don't, I don't invest in it. This is a really great idea. I like it a lot, and I think that it could be something that could be really helpful for students at these universities as well as other organizations. I love that idea. Um, I was wondering if there's any way that you could like pair or work with um, a company um, in Fort Wayne, like a um, financial advising company that would want to see something like this so they could hire more people out of IPFW. Would they be willing to make a donation to give, um, like they said, these other programs were started off of a large donation. Maybe you could get a bunch of small donations to create a fund that you would be able to work with because that would benefit them as well as benefit the students and help your project um, meet one of those needs of acquiring the funds, if that's possible. Yeah, that's a great question. So there's been a, a three, actually three different businesses that I've, um, I've mentioned the idea too. I haven't actually asked for a donation or anything. I just I mentioned the idea. Um, just a couple of the specific people I met with. One was um, Ken Schmidt, where I used to work financial planning services. Uh, I mentioned the idea. It seems it sounds great. Just let me know if you need any help. I'll let you know. Which sounds great. I mean, I hope he does. I don't know if he will. Um, also, then there's, um, um, I met with, uh, it's SYM, um, and this chief financial advisor there is, um, it's, uh, his name is Andy. Um, I don't remember his last name. <laughs> But I call him Andy, so, and I've talked to him about it. And everybody's so supportive of that idea, and I honestly think they would give donations, and I think that's, like I mentioned, a great way to build that connection um, between these local businesses. So um, <laughs> if the project can get approved, that would be the first thing I do is go to them and ask for funding or set up some type of event. As a professor of finance and accounting, I would like to support uh, Adam's uh, proposal because uh, I would argue that the issue or the uh, problem that he uh, pointed out is a national security issue. <laughs> it's not just a personal <laughs> financing issue because uh, uh, who owns the most debt of the United States? It's not us. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> Why didn't we own our own debt? Or tre treasury stock is because we don't save enough. And, and that's really a big issue. And uh, uh, as we underfund our own pensions, the federal government is going to come in to solve their problem for us. And that means more debt for this country. So it's, it's, it's a vicious cycle we are actually going through this. I've been advocating uh, uh, all the uh, uh, college students to learn economics. And, but that will go through the whole <laughs> problem of instituting that uh, as a general education courses. But this, this way, the investment club, I would insist it can only be joined by non-finance non major because they are the <laughs> one that need, need uh, if, you want to if you want to understand how economics works, study the market is the, actually the and it, you don't need any prerequisite. There, there's some basic knowledge, but uh, I, I'm always appalled by, uh, particularly when, when we are electing our next president at the presidential debate, I'm always appalled by how little our future president know economics. <laughs> <laughs> how, for example, how uh, imposing a, a tariff, uh, how would that affect a lot of the company and, and a lot of employees too? So if I, I really welcome this, and I really propose only non-finance major can join this <laughs> club. And, and then so the mission of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, PUF uh, will be really served if we have this as an actual curriculum activity. And not, I would like it to be a formal curriculum, but <laughs> at this point, I'll be happy uh, that we really want to prepare uh, a good citizen uh, for our country. Thank you. Thanks for coming too. Good to see you.